I'm going to show you how adding surface imperfections to your materials makes them more realistic and engaging. Hey, what's up? I'm David Aryev, and I'm a 3D motion designer and educator, and I'm gonna help you make your renders better. In this video, you'll learn how to add roughness, specular, bump, normal, and displacement maps, and how each contribute to the realism of your materials. Avoid texture repetitions, and how to use the dirt node to erode materials at the edges. If you want more ideas to improve your renders, make sure to grab our PDF of 10 tips in the description. Now let's get started. As 3D artists, we're always fighting perfection, because by default, CG looks perfect and the real world is full of imperfections. Surfaces get dented, scratched, dusty, and greasy, and it's our job to add those details in. Let's start with probably the simplest example, which is roughness maps. In reality, surfaces with more micro detail, like sandpaper for instance, are rougher, so the light that hits them bounces off at many different angles and is therefore less reflective than a smooth surface like this that's polished and highly reflective. When we add in a roughness map, which is a simple black and white texture, we vary the roughness over the surface and suddenly it looks far more realistic. We can even layer multiple maps like this with add or multiply nodes in Octane. Here with this tiles texture from polygon.com, this is what happens when we add in the roughness map. Here it's actually a glossy map, which is the inverse of a roughness map, so we need to click the invert button. Next, let's add in the specular map, which is very similar, but instead of varying the roughness, it varies the specularity, which means the intensity of the reflection. Now here's a big one, the normal map. This causes the surface to act like it's raised, and in general, normal maps do the same kind of thing as bump maps, but are actually more accurate because they take into account all the normal directions and angles light can hit the surface. Note though that these maps aren't actually raising the surface, just giving the impression of a raised surface by reacting to the lighting. Speaking of bump maps, let's add one of those in too to create some additional scratches on the surface. Bump maps in Octane are usually too strong, so we need to mix them down with a multiply node. This is just like the multiply blend mode in Photoshop or After Effects. If you multiply by a number less than one, then you're reducing the intensity. So this setup becomes like a mix slider. Finally, displacement maps actually do move the surface outwards and inwards, so they produce an even more realistic result than normal maps for very raised surfaces, though they are more heavy and taxing to use. Next, let's talk about another overly perfect and computer-generated looking thing that happens in 3D, and that's texture repetitions. Here we've got a seamless texture, and it's obviously repetitive, but just by creating a duplicate and scaling that up, we have another variation. Let's also rotate it 90 degrees for some more randomness. Now if we add in a mix node in Octane, we can blend between the two. This is a 50% opacity blend here by default. Here's one texture, and now the other. Now if we use a procedural Octane noise, or even another texture, we can use that to vary between the two scales of the original texture. Now this is looking a lot less repetitive. We can keep doing this too with a third copy, and just keep adding more and more randomness. Now when we zoom out and make some slight adjustments to the scale of the textures, we don't see any repetitions in the whole surface. Super cool. The same kind of thing can be done too by layering displacement maps. Here we've got an obviously repetitive map, but when we add in another and put a displacer object with a noise in it, the second displacement map will intersect in patches with the other one and break up the repetition. And the more maps we add, the more of an organic looking surface we get. Finally, let's take a look at another way to add imperfections, and that's by using curvature maps, or in Octane it's called the dirt node. The edges of objects are typically the surfaces that get the most damaged, and often we'll see something like a metal that's painted, and on the edges the paint is eroding. To do this, we just create a composite material in Octane to blend between the two materials. One is a paint, and the other one is the metal. Then we use the dirt node as a mask to show the metal on just the edges, and the paint as the main surface. It's still missing some breakup though, and to do this it's gotten much easier in Octane recently because you can pipe a noise directly into the dirt node for extra breakup on the edge. Here's the before and after. And the dirt map solo before and after. As we get further into creating imperfections in our materials, we can build up more and more complex materials like this. For instance, here's a brick wall with just the diffuse color, and you can see how it's weirdly reflecting the neon lights. Then once we add in the roughness map, we solve that problem, and it looks much more natural. And then the normal map allows the raised areas of the brick to catch the light properly. Next, we create a concrete material, and we've got the same reflection issue until we add in the roughness map. And then the normal map to catch the light and create natural bumps in the surface. Now we create a complex mask to blend between the two using noises and black and white textures, and now it looks like concrete with patches of exposed brick, so much more interesting. 
Finally, if we use the mask in the bump channel of both the brick texture and the concrete texture, it feels like there's an edge or indent between the concrete and where it's eroded to the brick, so it feels much more realistic. For a final note, try and think of additional ways you can add imperfections. For example, with this wall, I added additional layers of paint smudges, as well as a final layer of graffiti to sell the realism. By keeping these tips in mind, you'll be well on your way to consistently creating awesome renders. If you want to learn more ways to improve your renders, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we drop the next tip.